A developmental approach then. A few of you said it might be nice if you could talk it through. Can't obviously do that at the moment, so here we go like this. Um, we know we're going to have done this successfully where we can describe and give a bit of evidence for three different key concepts of a developmental approach. Furthermore, we're going to be able to describe what the key theme of both the studies, which is Bandura and Cheney, we're going to be looking at are, which are external influences on children's development, and we're going to be able to talk about what's good about the developmental approach and what's less good about the developmental approach. So our first key concept is that children are different to adults, and people, as general, change and develop over their lifespan. But obviously, kids change more. So therefore, traditionally, the developmental approach is very much focused on children. He also, they also talk about, largely thanks to the work of this man in the picture, Jean, Jean Piaget, or Jean Piggott to his friends that can't read. He said it may happen in stages. So have a little think about what those differences between children and adults are before going further. By and large, the developmental approach looks at three areas. Emotional development, cognitive development and behavioural change. Okay? So how emotions are different in children than adults? Well, think about it. Kids seem to be more openly emotional. They don't hold, hide their emotions so much. They go from extremes more easily. They seem to be triggered by things that are less likely, seem less serious to adults to have extreme emotions. Thought processes are less logical for kids. That's not to say that adults are always more logical either. What we've got to kind of bear in mind with development is that when you talk about change, we tend to talk about change being a generally consistent new pattern of behaviours. However, we can always slip into the bad old ways if we feel the urge. Anyway, kids are less logical. Um, they easier to trick, if you will. They thinking is more simplistic and straightforward. We'll look at a few of those which our friend Jean Piaget kind of worked hard to, to prove with some ingenious little experiments that have been repeated far and wide by psychology students across the land. And behaviour, of course, kids are different as well. Um, you know, when I was little, I wasn't walking, I was running everywhere. When I was about four, you know, running's what I did. Now I can't think of anything worse. Sitting is what I'm doing. I probably stay up later because nobody tells me to go to bed. Um, I probably get up later because no one tells me to go to bed. There are all kinds of differences. Next time you're in a supermarket, and it might not be for a while, but next time you are, have a look at the children. They are probably, I hope, behaving differently to you. So anyway, stages. As you should know, Piazza says there are four developmental stages, and we're not going to talk too much about this because we're not studying Piaget at the moment. He comes in in child psychology, which is an application we're going to be looking at next year. Um, but he said that there are four stages of development. The sensory motor stage, which is basically babies up to a baby, uh, toddlers, learn to control their bodies, learn to make sense of senses that come in, to perceive things, to make sense of what you're seeing. Uh, depth perception, for instance, being able to grasp things, etc. Pre-operational, this is the most fun stage. Pre-logical thinking, pretty much, for most small children. Um, you know, uh, my son the other day said to me, Daddy, should I have a go on a hide and seek? I said, OK, son. And so what he did then? He hid. You know how he hid? You do, don't you? You're doing it now. He went like this. As he thinks, if I can't see him... No, no, no. Let me try that again. He thinks, if he can't see me, that I can't see him. He thinks that I can see what he can see. He's 24. That's something we call egos 
egocentrism. No, it's not. It's perceptual egocentrism. And this is something that develops around about the age of three from two to seven. More importantly, he discovered lots of stuff about, or not more importantly, perhaps more interestingly and easier to define, he just discovered, mm -hmm. of course, about conservation. Conservation is the basic idea that just the ch shape of something changes, the amount of it, or the volume of it, or the mass of it, doesn't change. So if you take a round piece of plasticine and you flatten it down, a child will say, there's more in the flat bit than there isn't, even though they've seen you do it. If you take a short fat cup and you pour it into a taller, thinner cup, the child will say there's more in the tall, thin cup. Interestingly, I've tried this. They can then watch you do it again, and they will say there was the same amount in the second cup. That's, of course, comparing it to another pine pot, which I forgot to bring with me, so I'll have to take my word for that one. All right, the point is, going back to our old friend, the key concept, that development happens in stages and your behaviour can be limited to what stage you're in. So, if I'm a two-year-old and I'm hiding, I cover my eyes, because I'm perceptually egocentric. If I'm a five-year-old, I'm choosing a drink, I choose a tall, thin one, because I think there's more. Even if I've just seen that there's the exact same amount. Behaviour, limited stages. This is debatable, of course, but we'll get to that in the weaknesses. Next up, the second key concept. Development can occur in a number of ways. It could be simple maturation, which is natural growing, getting older, getting bigger, getting better. Well, uh, or it could be due to the environment, which is one of the bonuses of the developmental approach in that it does bring in a whole nature and nurture thing, which we like, how much is one, how much is the other. You've seen, I hope you've seen, a bit of a video of Bandura's study, or copies of Bandura's study, and you've seen little boys and girls being exposed to an adult smashing up a Bobo doll in a particularly stylized manner, and then repeating that behavior. But generally speaking, the boys tend to do it more than the girls. That might be due to social interaction. Banjo himself talk about children being rewarded for gender specific behaviors that are appropriate to them. On the other hand, it could be more due to uh, maturation, physical differences. Uh, boys have more testosterone, um, they are naturally more aggressive on the whole, um, certainly physically aggressive, and so that influences the behaviour they, they choose to imitate or the extent of the behaviour they choose to imitate. So, it could be due to one of either of two things. And um, finally, a bit of uh, a bit of something that actually really does make an approach rather than just uh, an application of psychology is the idea that childhood affects adulthood and who we are as an adult could be to some extent caused by who we were and what happened to us as children. Freud suggested that, he talked about for instance, uh, being the anal stage, and if potty training was too severe, then you could become anally retentive, uh, basically like Moncroft friends, really overly neat and tidy, etc. All due to subconsciously worrying about voiding your bowels. Other emotional developments suggested something called an internal working model, which means that an adult's internal representation of themselves and the relationships that they have has been caused by them putting that together in their heads because of the relationship they had with their own parents. Uh, and if that is happy and unconditionally loving and secure, then they have uh, a positive view of themselves and of the relationships they have and those relationships therefore are successful and they are successful. If that internal working model is less 
uh, positive than they themselves may be. Uh, less happy, less successful, and possibly less um, less good at relationships as well. So there you go. There's uh, three key concepts. We'll have a recap at the end, shall we? Now, strengths and weaknesses. What's bad about child the developmental approach? And what's good about developmental approach? Well, the strength, as ever, is that it has applications. There's the Children's Act, which was first done in 1989. Legally, the safety of the child is paramount. When there's a child involved in any domestic legal situation, their welfare comes above everything else. And that's set in law, and that's due in no small part to the likes of the work by PRJ and Sean Balby and others, who showed that possibly the uh, you know emotional attachment affects later life, which in turn affects society. So by protecting children, we're protecting society in the future. Um, we've got education. The fact that we know how children think means that we can help children to think better, to progress to develop their thinking. We've got the watershed, which you'd probably be aware of. We're not allowed to uh, do the old kind of like uh, swearing, nudity, uh, shenanigans on telly till gone nine o'clock because then children should be in bed because mm, we were that they learn by imitation and by seeing stuff and so we don't want to learn certain things because they haven't got the, the personality developed enough to realize what they should and shouldn't do i guess in a nutshell and like we said it contributes quite a lot to the nature and nurture debate uh weakness wise uh reductionist if you're blaming people's success or failures, adults on childhood, perhaps you're overemphasizing the importance of childhood. Change occurs all the time, you know. Let's not forget that. There are ethical issues in dealing with children. They can't give you informed consent because they can't really understand. Even if they think they can, they can't because they're kids. Um, we can get parental consent that's not necessarily the same thing, of course, because it's not the actual person's consent, so we can never actually have their consent. Um, it could be more difficult for them to withdraw as well. It's like, is a child actually comfortable with saying, excuse me, I don't want to ask your questions about water in the cups anymore. I'd like to go and play in the sandpit, if that's all right with you. They wouldn't know, of course, that they've got Jean Piaget to thank for there being a sandpit, but that's another point. Um, they can't really, and which is why in the third phase of Banjura's study, when they're observing them in the free playroom, hopefully imitating the behaviour, at first they were left alone in that room and there was just the uh, male experimenter behind the one-way mirror doing the observation. But then the female experimenter had to stay in the room potentially do some paperwork because the kids kept trying to escape. So in effect it was her job to stop them from withdrawing. Ethical issues are weakness. Uh, furthermore, experimental weaknesses. Children are easily influenced by adults. There is a school of thought that's kind of been proved that Piaget, by doing something as simple as asking a question twice, led the children to behave in a certain way and so underestimated their ability. Kids know if you say to them, is this good? And they go, yes. And you go, but is it good? Their best answer then is no, because you're kind of giving them a clue. So there you go, they, they pick up on clues very easily and so it can be difficult to actually effectively assess if what they're doing is real or not. Uh, final point is that both studies are to do with external influence on children's behaviour, which means pretty much what it says on the tin uh, what is outside of the child affects how they develop, how they change over time. In Bandura, that external influence is other people, modelling behaviour. And for Cheney, that exterior influence is fun, rewards, whistles, etc. So that's that. Uh, we'll have a little chat about developmental approach sometime soon, and then we'll have a quick squeeze through the studies. Bye for now.